All right. Good morning, gentlemen. I hate to cut off the banner, but uh, man, we want to value your time and uh, just so thankful for you guys joining us. A couple of quick announcements before we jump into this morning's uh, word from the word. Hey, don't forget August the 1st, we have a couple of things that will be uh, ending and a couple of things will be increasing. The Men of Valor Conference uh, registration fee will be going up August the 1st. So if you have not registered yet, it will be going up to a hundred dollars. So, uh, man, save you some money. Go ahead and get registered. Like we said, if you've got a group of ten or more coming from your church, we do have a discount for that as well. Uh, you can email us at Men of Valor Conferences with a S at gmail.com and uh, and inquire more about that discount for the group rate. So, uh, make sure you get registered before August the first. Also, on August the first, if you're planning on man joining this year's G Race, which uh, is sponsored by Gaborum Studios. Uh, the last day you can get a t shirt for that is August the 1st. So if you sign up after August 1st, you can still sign up for the race. And there is a digital option for that as well. And also in person, where we'll be attacking that hill over at the uh, Men of Valor Conference up in Ridgecrest, North Carolina, if you're there. But there is the digital option. 100% of all that funds coming off that go straight into Men of Valor Conference for us, man, just to do what we do, pouring into men and helping us put on a conference and then do things that we do throughout the year. So don't forget about that. Don't procrastinate and uh, miss that t-shirt. If you haven't seen the design, it's over on the Gabor map in our Men of Valor community. Also, it's on our Facebook page. We just dropped that. Uh, Friday. So uh, make sure you don't miss out on that t-shirt. Make sure if you haven't registered yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and commit and get it. Uh, like I said, there's a digital option as well for you guys that just can't make it to Men of Valor Conference Live. Uh, there will be, there is a digital pass on the website that you can go ahead and get that. So you can get all the main sessions and first access to uh, the breakout sessions when they get loaded up to YouTube as well. So don't forget about those things, man. We're so pumped. We are 38 days away from MOV 2022, and we just can't wait. We had an executive team meeting Thursday, uh, just kind of doing some last minute, man, making sure everything is lined up and ready. And we are pumped and excited to just, uh, man, get to be with you guys. So if you haven't got over in the Gaborum app, free download, and man, got over in our MOB community. Make sure you go sign up for that community inside the app because there we give first access to a lot of stuff. We announce a lot of stuff MOB there that we don't put out anywhere else. So make sure if you're not part of that community that you get over there. Also, just want to plug really quick, uh, SoulCon Challenge is coming up and it will be here August the 1st as well. So a lot happening on August the 1st. So, hey, if you're a man and you've never taken on the SoulCon Challenge, a lot of the guys that do what we do with us right here, join that. You can find that on the Gabor out there. Join that team. And, uh, man, I promise you it's the six weeks that you won't regret if you'll push all in one of the best discipleship tools. I'll say the best discipleship tool for men that I've come across on teaching spiritual, mental, and physical discipline. So uh, just a plug for our, one of our sponsors, Born Studios. We'd love for you to come take on that challenge with us. All right. So enough announcements. Hey, if you got your copy of God's Word, uh, be turning with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1 this morning. 2 Timothy chapter number one this morning. I really kind of procrastinated. Uh, I usually don't do that. Really, I just kind of forgot it was my week uh, until end of week last week. And I reached out to a couple guys trying to line somebody up last minute. And uh, man, just the, the guys I reached out to just wasn't available this morning. Uh, one of them, JC Groves, I reached out to him. He hit me up at 2 a.m. said, I'm still awake, so I probably ain't going to be up at 530. So that's, that plugs for you, JC. Come see him, man. That, that dude is a nut. Uh, and he's just great guy. Great guy. So be uh, make sure he kind of shared with me kind of his thoughts where he's going to be the message he's going to be bringing at Men of Valor yesterday. So you, ain't gonna, you don't want to miss uh, that and everything else we got going on. But uh, so this morning, last night, I sat down and just kind of was just praying and seeking what God uh, wanted me to share this morning. And it's just kind of where I feel the spirit led. Uh, so Second Timothy chapter one, we're going to read a few verses. I just want to give you five things out of these verses that God just showed me last night. So let me pray for us and then we'll dive into God's word this morning together. Father, we love you. Just so thankful for these men that have joined us live, for all the men catching the playback. And this morning, just prayed that God, there's nothing that I say can change a life. There's nothing that I can say 
Lord, that can truly bring change. But we know that your word, God, it is sharp. God, it changes us. God, it, it will go to places that we don't want it to go. And I pray this morning, God, that you would do what only you can do, that your spirit, Lord, would stir in us. Lord, if there's areas we need to bring to you of conviction, God, of correction, Lord, that we bring it in, in a true form of a heart of repentance this morning to turn and look for ways to change, to be better, to be better followers of Christ. And Father, just pray that today for every man that's here, that our hearts will be open now, that we would truly be here, not just to uh, be in routine of what we do on Monday mornings, but we would be here saying, Holy Spirit, speak to me. And Father, when you do, May we be obedient and say yes, Lord, to whatever it is that you call us to do today. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, 2 Timothy chapter number one. I'm going to begin reading in verse number six this morning. I'm going to be reading out the CSB. This is what God's word says. Therefore, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. So don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Instead, share in the suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his on purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. This has now been made evident through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has abolished death and has brought life and immorality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald, apostle, and teacher, and that is why I suffer these things. But I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to guard what he has entrusted to me until that day. Man, what a great just few verses right out. Paul writing to Timothy, this young man, that man is his mentor that he's poured into. And this morning, I just want to share five things just right through these verses that God just showed me last night that I jotted down, and I hope that they're an encouragement to you this morning as they was to me, a great reminder. So uh, number one, verse six, we see this simple thing. I must remember what I've been given. I must remember what I've been given. We see Paul right here. He said, he said, I remind you. He said, Timothy, I want to remind you just in case you've forgotten, man, that you need to rekindle. You need to, some, some versions even say you need to stir up the gift of God that he has given you. Can I remind you, just in case you've forgotten this morning, just in case, man, the brain fog of Monday has set in and you woke up this morning and, and maybe you just haven't really thought about it yet, that the true gift that you have been given of the Holy Spirit, the true gift that you have been given of salvation, I think there's a lot of times we just totally get so caught up in the things going on of our work, of our family, uh, maybe a situation that you're in, and we truly forget the gift of God that he has given us through Christ Jesus. Number one, the gift of salvation, the gift of eternity with him in heaven. And when you truly get your mindset on the gifts of God and what he has given you, man, it should change your life. It should change your perspective. It should change the way you look at everything that you go through. But a lot of times, I've said this here recently, a lot of times we get so focused on the presence of God, the P-R-E-S-N-T-S, the presence, the gifts of God, that we forget the true, the true present that he has given us is his presence, is his, man, his being right with us. Man, there's days that you can just sense his presence uh, in your quiet time. And I wish I could say, guys, that spiritually, man, every day in my quiet time, I can sense the presence of God. And it's like he's right there. And there are some days it's like he's sitting in the chair right beside me. And it's like he's speaking directly into my ear and I can hear him. And there's other days, guys, that I wonder, man, God, are you even in, are you even around today? Have you kind of taken off? Are you over in Australia with Simon today and decided not to show up over here in the States with me today? I 
I, but listen, I know he's there. And the promise of his presence, that he'll never leave us, that he'll never forsake us, that he's always right there with us. And if we can truly be reminded, and sometimes I have to remind myself because I can get in myself. And it's those moments, right? Or Luke 9, 23, that I have to deny myself. And I have to deny those thoughts, the, the voice of the enemy that's shouting loud, that God has abandoned you, that God is not here, that God doesn't want to speak to you. But there's those moments that I have to stir up in the way I stir it up is to be reminded of, man, that the God's word is true, that even though my thoughts, my opinion, man, they don't matter when it's lined up against the word of God. Listen, in those moments when I feel like God's not there, my feelings don't matter because he is there because he said he would be. And God is a man of his word. He cannot tell a lie. So I just want to remind you, just like Paul said here, he said, I want to remind you, man, I want to be the one that does that for you to remind you of the gift of God that is in you this morning. And I just want to remind you, sir, hey, Remember, God has not forsaken you. Man, he has not only given you the present of, man, of the gifts that he promises, the promises of God, but it's his presence that he has given you, the Holy Spirit that indwells inside of you. And he tells us that greater is he that is in us, that he that is in the world. And if we truly remember that presence, we truly stir that back up this morning, it will change the way I look at my day. It will change the way I look at the problems. Are problems going to come? Dang skippy they are man because we live in this broken world in a broken world guess what broken things happen uh man he told us in his word right it, 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 the, it rains on the just and the unjust there's things going to happen to us there's things going to happen to a believer but man it's when we truly are reminded that his presence is with us that yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death what's it say he is with me. Even when I walk, he's with me through the valley. He's with me on the mountaintop. He's with me when I'm climbing. He's with me when I'm falling. He's with me at all times. And when I'm reminded of that, man, it will change my mindset. So this morning, I just want to tell you, just remember the things. Just like Paul told Timothy, hey, let that stuff be rekindled. And I think of rekindling. If you think if you've ever been around the fire, man, what a little wind will do to a fire. And what's the wind in, in the scriptures, a picture of the Holy Spirit. When we ask the Holy Spirit, maybe this morning, you just need to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I need a fresh breath from you. I need a fresh breath to rekindle and remember what you have done in my life, to remember that you are truly here. And man, when you see that wind blow through those ambers that are down deep, they'll start to get red hot again. And all of a sudden there'll be a flame come up in you and be like Jeremiah and you can't hold it in. But man, I I just want to just remind you this morning that the one that can truly rekindle you is the Holy Spirit, is God, but it takes you getting in his word, just not showing up on Manda Monday, but showing up in his word, taking time to get in, to talk to God, to have that presence with him, to get that fresh breath from the Holy Spirit. So number one, we must remember what we've been given. Number two, we see in verse seven, and this is real simple, but I think you need to hear it this morning. We must also remember, man, God has equipped you. God has equipped you. We see in verse number seven, it simply tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear. He said, but he's given us this spirit. This is what he's given us. He's given us a spirit of power, of love, and of sound judgment or a sound mind, your scripture may tell you, it may be translated, man, just to think that God has given us the power uh, in so many different ways. We could take this and run with it, but he's given us the power to overcome that temptation that's going to come your way today. Can I tell you, sir, you're going to be tempted today. There's going to be things tempting you to sin, to look at this or to do this or partake of this. God has given you the power to overcome that. If we will truly remember his presence is with us, turn to him in those moments. He tells us in Corinthians that there's nothing common to man, but you will be tempted in every way, but he will make in a way of escape for you. It's in those moments that you got to look for his presence and look for that way out and run to it. He has given you the power to see the temptation, to know the temptation, but also to flee and to get away from it. And he has given you the power to do that. He has given you the power to speak the gospel. He has given you the power to live the life that God has called you to live, to be the man of God that you have been called to be. But man, he also tells 
tells us that he gives us the spirit of love. And a lot of times, you know, we'll take that love and we'll, you know, want to kind of sissy fight, right? When we think of love, we want to think of rainbows and hearts and just all this pretty girly stuff. Can I remind you what true love is? True love is standing on truth. True love is standing on truth. I truly love somebody. I'm going to stand on the word of God, tell them the truth, not to condemn them, but hopefully allow the Holy Spirit to speak and correct them uh, when they're in their sin. And I'm going to do everything. You know, 1 Corinthians 16, 13, we like that verse as men, right? Man, that verse is preached at men's conferences. It's been preached here at Men of Valor. And there, if we're going to say, you know, stand firm. It is like, be a man. Be a man, stand firm in the word of God. But then we'll leave off verse 14 right after that. And it says this, and do everything in love. He says, stand firm, be a man. But he says, you must do this stuff in love, that you can be the warrior for Christ. You can strap up, put the armor of God on. But listen, if you're going out and just swinging your sword and you're doing it in a way that I'm going out to slay everything, I'm slaying all these things, but you're not doing it in love, can I tell you, you are not being the man of God that he has called you to be. You are not leading the way he has called you to be because he says you must do everything in love. Jesus, how many times do we see Jesus? Because we know this, right? That God is love. So if we're doing things outside of love, if we're doing things with other motives to get back at people or I'll show them I know God's word better than I do, can I tell you if you're doing that in a spirit that's not of love, then you are not in the will of God, sir. Because God is love. And if you're doing things out of the spirit of love, then you're not doing what God has called you to do. Like I said, love stands on truth. And who's the truth? Jesus said, I am the truth. So we know standing on him, standing on his word is truth. And God has equipped us with power, love, and of sound judgment, that sound mind, for us to have, man, those moments where I stand and, and where I speak, where I say this, God has equipped you to do it. And thirdly, we see this. I got to move fast. Thirdly, we see this in verse number eight. We must not be ashamed, right? And we know this. We know this. We know when you go over to Romans 1, 16, where Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power that, that saves the Greek and the, and the Jew. He, he says, man, that's why I'm not ashamed because people need to hear the gospel. But Paul went right into it. And in mind, it's got these broke up, but it's a, it's a running theme here, right? Paul was writing to Timothy and he told Timothy, he said, hey, I want to remind you of what's been put inside of you. I want to remind you that God has equipped you. Why? So that you don't have to be ashamed. And what did he say? He made it plain and simple. He said, Timothy, don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. He said, don't be ashamed of Jesus. And so many times, listen, I think we forget his presence. We forget what we've been given. And we truly forget that God has equipped us with power, love, and a sound judgment. And that is the reason that we are ashamed because, listen, the enemy is really good at trying to tell you your identity, trying to tell you that because of your weaknesses, because of that thing that you think is weak in you, that you can't do it. But I remind you the same thing that God told Paul, that in your weakness, I'm shown strength. He says, hey, I want to use that weakness because that way you can't get no glory out of it. That way you can't say, I don't know what that was. I know it wasn't me, but all you can do is point to God. Listen, I want to tell you that weakness that the enemy is trying to get you to shut up and sit down and not do what God is calling you to do is the exact same weakness that God has equipped you to overcome. God has equipped you to use that weakness for his glory. Why? So that you will not be ashamed of the gospel. So you will not be ashamed. So you'll go out and boldly when God calls you, when he gives you that sound judgment, that sound mind, and he says, hey, speak. I need you to share right here. I need you to pray with this person. I need you to do this. Even though you think, man, this is going to be hard. Uh, it might be embarrassing. It, it's out of my comfort zone. Can I tell you, that's great because that way he gets glory out of it. Because if it was about you, then we'd all be worshiping you but it's not about you. It's all about him. Remember, man, that what you've been given, remember that God has equipped you. Don't be ashamed. And fourthly, we see this in verse number nine. Listen, you have purpose. And I wrote this on my notes today. 
You don't just have purpose tomorrow. You just don't have purpose for next year. You just don't have purpose when you get to Men of Valor Conference. Listen, you, sir, yes, you, the one I'm pointing at right now, you have purpose today. Look at verse number nine. He has saved us. So if you're here, you're born again by the precious blood of Christ. And you'd say, I'm saved. I've been bought. Remember what scripture tells us that you were bought with a high price. Listen, you wouldn't over in the little cheap discount section. Jesus didn't go to the clearance section when he was looking for, you No, know. he went to the high end because he saw value in you, sir. And he said, I'm paying a high price. I'm laying down my life, paying for it with my blood, because I think he has value. I know that he has value. He said, you have been saved and you have been called. He has called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, not because of who we are, but according to his own purpose and grace, which he has given to Christ in Christ Jesus before time begin. I want to tell you, sir, you have purpose for today. No matter what your circumstance, no matter where you're at, no matter what uh, sign of life you're in right now, whether you're married, whether you're single, where you got kids, whether you do not, can I tell you, you have purpose. God has placed you and planted you exactly where you're at for such a time as this, for you to stand up, be reminded, man, of, of his presence, be reminded of his calling, to be reminded that he has equipped you, to be reminded that you you cannot be ashamed of the gospel if you're truly going to follow Jesus. Jesus said, deny yourself daily. Pick up your cross. What's that's a sign of? It's a sign of torture. It's a sign of death. It's a sign, man, of something that you really don't want to do that your flesh hates. But he says, hey, if you're going to follow me, you got to pick it up that you're not going to be ashamed. Listen, Christ hung naked on that cross, not ashamed because he loved you. The least we can do is stand up on the truth every day. He is equipped you don't be ashamed you have purpose for today but fifthly and we wrap up here with this and this is where it all ties in you ready it's all coming around the circle coming back to what it all ties around remember your why we talk about this a lot in SoCon Challenge to remember your why on why you're doing the challenge and to remember your why but I want to remember your why and it's simple guys it's really simple to remember our why on why we've been given what we've been given, on who has equipped us, on why we're not to be ashamed, on why you have purpose for today. And it's simply this, one word, you ready? If you want to write it down, write it down. You're going to know it. You probably know how to spell it. It's one word, Jesus. Jesus. Verses 10 through 12 of our text, he says this. This has been made evident through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has abolished death and has brought life and immorality to the light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald, an apostle, a teacher. And that is why I suffer these things. But I'm not ashamed. Why? Because I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to guard what he has entrusted to me. Hebrews 12 tells us this, that Jesus is the author and the perfecter of our faith. And he is the one that will finish what he started. Listen, sir, he has started a good work in you. And I promise you this, he will finish it. He will finish it. The old, the, old, the old video game, some of you might remember, if you're if you're an 80s, 90s kid, old Mortal Kombat, right? He's like, finish him. I promise you this, Jesus will finish. And when he was on the cross and he already claimed it, he already done it. He said, it is finished. When he said that, he said, man, I paid the price. I've taken care of everything. You can remember the gift that I've given you, but that precious gift that I truly give you is the presence of the Holy Spirit, that he is with you every moment, every day. So guys, I really want to challenge you to remember your why today to remember that Jesus is your why. And listen, this has been my mindset. I've been trying to make this my mindset over the past couple of weeks. Uh, I wish I could say that I've been trying to truly do it for years. But over the past couple of weeks, man, I've been trying to get refocused. And I've truly, and what's helped me is throughout the day, I've been trying my best to make God honoring decisions in everything. 
to make God honoring decisions, to stop and pause and have a conversation with God, right? Because man, our quiet time with God just don't happen that one time in the morning, that one time in the evening when I open this up. But my quiet time with God should be throughout the day as I speak to him, as I'm going throughout my day. Listen, that's what a relationship is about, right? It's having that, that, that common conversation with God as I'm going throughout my day. Because listen, when I remember his presence is with me, the Holy Spirit is within me. And I said, I don't have to have a certain place I go to to speak to God, that he is right there with me, that I don't have to go to him. Why? Because he came to me. He's with me. I can speak to him throughout the day. I can ask him to help me. Lord, I, I need you in this moment and just have that conversation or just, man, that random conversation with God. Y'all might think I'm crazy, but there's sometimes I was like, I'll just stop and I'll see something. I'll say, man, God, that was amazing. You know, and I just talk to him because he is there. He is there. I can't see him, but I know he's there. Man, it would change everything if Jesus was literally sitting in the passenger seat of our car, wouldn't it? We wouldn't tell that guy he was number one when he cut us off at, at the traffic light, right? We, it would change the way we done. But, but when we truly get in the mindset of he is there, he sees, he hears, he knows your thoughts, he knows my thoughts, then when we truly start remembering that, it will change things. Sir, God has equipped you. He's given you power to go out today. He's given you the spirit of love to do everything in love. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. You have purpose today. Remember your why. Remember Jesus. And let him transform your day. Let him transform your mind. We know right, in Romans, I believe it's 12, where he says, man, it's where we need that. Don't be conformed to the things of this world. Romans 1, 12, and 12, 1 and 2. But be transformed with what? The renewing of your mind. It's simple, guys. I've told you before, if you get up on Man Up Monday and you don't take time to get in the Word of God, I'd rather you not get on this call live and you spend this 30 minutes with you getting in the Word of God. You can catch the playback anytime because it'll be loaded on YouTube in a little bit. But if, if, it's, if Man Up Monday is replacing your personal quiet time with God, stop getting on Man Up Monday and spend time with God. Spend time with Him. Come catch this on your ride to work. That other stuff that you're putting ahead of your time with God, listen, this is what's going to trans this is what's going to transform your mind. This is what's going to remind you. This is what's going to stir up the gifts that is put inside of you so that you can go out and be reminded that you are, you're equipped. It's the word of God. So I challenge you, man. Hey, get in it. Be reminded this morning. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. That what the enemy is yelling at you, speaking to you, saying you're weak, you can't do it. Remember. That weakness is exactly what God wants to use for his glory. Let me pray for you, man, and then we'll wrap up today. Father, I pray over every single man, Lord, that has been with us this past 20-something minutes, that's heard the words from your word. I pray, God, that they've been challenged from your word. I pray that your spirit has done a work. I pray if there's a man right now, Lord, that is uh, bowing his head and, and down deep, he knows that there's some areas that he's been ashamed. There's some areas that maybe he's not been leading with love. There's some areas that he's, Lord, he's just been reminded that he has been gifted in that area of weakness for your glory. But God, he's been listening to the voice of the enemy over the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I pray right now, God, if that's something you're calling somebody to, that right where they're at, that, that they'd be reminded that your presence is right there with them. And God, right now in their heart, they would just talk to you. God, they maybe even just turn this thing off right now just to have a moment with you to repent, to let you stir up the gift that you have placed in them, and that you would give them a boldness. I pray, Father, that you would just allow us all to go out and be the men of God that you're calling us to be today. Speak to us so that you can speak through us. And may we be the men of God that go out and light this thing up for you, God. You said that we are the light of the world. And God, you are wanting to use us. And may we say yes, Lord, to everything that you call us to do today. And we ask this in the power of precious name of Jesus. Guys, man, thank y'all so good. We're right on time. Uh, of course, long-winded preachers don't give time for anybody else. Uh, but, hey, we'd love for you to take this over to uh, the app, man, bring the conversation over there. 
Uh, I'll make sure you check the chat. I haven't had time to look at it. I'll leave the call up for just a few moments after we end for you guys on here live so you can catch the prayer request. Make sure you go through and pray over if there's any requests in there. And man, don't forget, hey, menofvalorconference.org. Go get signed up. Uh, get over there. Get signed up for the for the G race. Uh, get that T-shirt. Uh, man, get signed up. Be a part of everything God is doing through Men of Valor. We're just, we're honored. Listen, we're not praying for a move of God. We're just honored to be a part of a move of God uh, because we know this, God is going to use everything uh, that man, he is sending to Men of Valor Conference to pour into your life, to pour into other men's life. So, hey, go, hey, use the tools that are our, our best thing that we have, you know, our best what you call it, the best way that we get the word out is through you. It's through you saying, hey, inviting other men to come be a part, come check out this, uh, come be a part of what we're doing here. So you, our best advertising tool is not us going and paying Facebook, although we'll do that every now and then uh, to run an ad. Our best advertisement is your voice saying, hey, man, up Monday has been a blessing to me. Come check it out. Men of Valor Conference has been a blessing to me. Come check it out. So, hey, don't forget, guys, Go be a part. Get registered if you're not. And, uh, man, we hope to see you guys next Monday. And, hey, be bold. Don't be ashamed. And go light it up for the king. Love you guys. Have a great week.